The Defense Intelligence of Ukraine has reported that Russia is sending personnel of the Russian Pacific Fleet and the 11th Air Force and Air Defense Army to the war in Ukraine to replenish sanitary and irrecoverable losses. According to the decision of Viktor Lina, the commander of the Russian Pacific Fleet, rotations to Syria have been completely stopped, and all personnel are being sent to the combat zone on the territory of Ukraine. We are talking about 2,000 Russian servicemen from the Primorsky and Kamchatka cries of the Russian Federation, intelligence reports that about 400 more soldiers from the military units of the 11th Air Force and Air Defense Army, stationed in Russia's Khabarovsk Krai, will patch up the holes of the Russian 155th and 40th Marine Brigades, which are understaffed due to huge losses. Part of the personnel from the military formations of Russia's Far East will join the new motorized infantry brigade, which is being formed in Voronezh. Ukraine reported that these Russian military formations have not been directly involved in hostilities against Ukraine before. According to the decision of the commander of the Pacific Fleet of the Russian Federation, Viktor Lina, rotations to Syria have been completely suspended, and all personnel are being sent to the combat zone in Ukraine. This includes 2,000 Russian military personnel from the Primorsky and Kamchatka regions of the Russian Federation, the main intelligence directorate reports the agency also pointed out that about 400 soldiers from units of the 11th Army of the Air Force and Air Defense, stationed in the Khabarovsk territory of the Russian Federation, will patch holes in the 155th and 40th brigades of the Russian Marine Corps, which are engaged in combat operations against Ukraine and are understaffed due to serious losses. A portion of the personnel from the military units in the Russian Far East will join a new motorized rifle brigade of the aggressor state, which is being formed in Voronezh, the main intelligence directorate stated Russian forces suffer significant losses daily in the war against Ukraine. The Russian army loses dozens, if not hundreds, of units of military equipment daily. The count of combat losses of personnel of the aggressor country also reaches into the hundreds. U.S. urges Russia not to play dangerous games at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The United States has called on Russia to return control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to Ukraine and asked Russia not to play dangerous games. Matthew Miller, spokesperson for the United States Department of State, said this. The Department of State noted that they are monitoring the situation at the station and have seen the official report of the International Atomic Energy Agency which notes that the damage caused by the drone strike did not jeopardize nuclear safety. Russia is playing a very dangerous game with its military seizure of Ukraine's nuclear power plant, which is the largest in Europe. It's dangerous that they've done that, and we continue to call on Russia to withdraw its military and civilian personnel from the plant to return full control of the plant to the competent Ukrainian authorities and refrain from taking any actions that could result in a nuclear incident at the plant, Miller said. On the 7th of April, Rafael Grossi, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency announced at least three direct strikes on the main structures of the containment vessel of one of the nuclear power plant's reactors. Grossi stressed that no one can gain any military or political benefit from attacks on nuclear facilities. It will not work. I strongly urge military decision makers to refrain from any action that violates the basic principles of protecting nuclear facilities, he wrote, without specifying which party he was addressing. The International Atomic Energy Agency announced that a drone exploded on the territory of the occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The Russians typically blamed Ukraine. Ukraine's defense intelligence said that Ukraine was not involved in any armed provocations at the occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and that simulated Russian strikes on the territory of the plant were a constant practice of the Russians. US preparing for Iranian retaliatory strike? American troops face constant threat. The White House has warned of the substantial threat faced by U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria amid a stream of threats issued by Iranian leadership in response to a suspected Israeli airstrike that killed several Iranian personnel last week near its embassy in Damascus. Addressing the warnings at a virtual press briefing, National Security Council Strategic Communicators Coordinator John Kirby declined to go into specific intelligence matters but reiterated President Joe Biden's assurance that the Israeli government could count on the United States' support for any self-defense needs against threats directly by Iran to Israel 
threats that Iran has made public and discussed preparations for potential risks to U.S. personnel as well. Our own people, not just our troops, but our diplomatic personnel as well in Iraq and Syria are under constant threat, Kirby said. We take that seriously and we take the appropriate force protection measures we need to as the threat changes to make sure that they can protect themselves and that has not changed. That will not change. We're continuing to do that. But we take the threat to our people in our own facilities seriously and we know that those groups, many of the groups that conduct those kind of attacks, are supported, funded, resourced by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is one of three primary branches of the Iranian armed forces along with the army which, like the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, includes ground, naval, air and missile branches and the law enforcement force. Branded a terrorist organization by the U.S. in 2019, the IRGC and its elite Quds Force conduct operations abroad and coordinate with an international coalition of militias known as the Axis of Resistance, including in Iran and Syria. Such groups have targeted Israel and U.S. troops since the war in the Gaza Strip erupted six months ago between the Israel, the Israel Defense Forces and the Palestinian Hamas movement. And Israel has targeted Iran-aligned units in Syria as part of a years-long semi-covert campaign.